Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church, everybody. I'm your brother, Zach Wah, and this is your brother, Kasafo. Uh We thank you for joining us, and if anybody is new, please feel free to write down in our comment section. Uh, we love to have your comments, even if you would like to with something more, um, you feel it's too much of a question for YouTube, send us an email at HebrewReaders at gmail.com. Uh, we do have a great lesson for everybody today going into the fe- the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, and we hope everybody is having a wonderful Shabbat Uh we, we apologize for the video. We, we're having issues with the new program, and uh, we're having a hard time authenticating going into YouTube for the live stream. So um, we hope that everybody gets to enjoy this recorded lesson. Again, we apologize. Um, our lesson today... Brother Casaso? Hey. <laughs> what is our lesson today? Our lesson today is to understand the beginning and end of our faith. As we are here, coming into the end of the Feast of Tabernacles, heading into the last great day, it's needful to understand this journey we're embarking on. And it's very important to understand it. So let's look at where this walk in Christ starts and where it takes us. So we know our personal beginning. We've all come from sin. Yet, seeing as though we have all fallen short of the glory of Allah, understanding how we are being delivered and taken and brought unto Christ is essential for us. Uh, Can you read Romans chapter 3, verse 23, please? Yes. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of Allah. So here we are. We are all off the path. All right, continue, please. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Yahweh. We have someone that brought us back on. He redeemed us to put us on the right road. Continue, please. Whom Allah has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of Elohim. And this all comes through faith in his blood. So you can see where, though we are sinners and have fallen short of the glory, our hope and our our deliverance to be put on the right road toward Elohim starts through faith in his blood. Continue, please. To declare, I say, At this time, his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Yahweh. So here we see already from what the scriptures show, we start our walk with faith in Yahweh. So then we get to see where our boasting is. Our boasting is in belief in his blood. That's where our rejoicing is. That's why Paul continues in Romans 3 and 27. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. The law of faith. Our boasting is not in the animal sacrifices that could not purge our conscience, but in the faith of the blood of the beloved Son of Allah. The apostles and believers were examples unto us to know that we don't stay that way through Christ Yahweh, when we embark on his path, though we came from, let me reword it, I apologize. The apostles and the believers helped us understand that though we came from sin and had fallen short of the glory, but when we believe on the blood of Yahweh, we don't stay in that form of sin as we were brought onto the way by Yahweh Christ. Can we read 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12? through 15 please first timothy chapter 1 verse 12 and i thank christ yache our lord who have enabled me for that he counted me faithful putting me into the ministry you see even as paul speaks he's thankful unto yache because it's him who's enabling him even so are we here thankful being enabled to be brought on the right path from our former sins continue please who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor, and injurious, but I obtain mercy, 
because I did it in, because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And here we are as well. We've all blasphemed, been persecutors, and been injurious unto others through our works of the flesh. Yet, through the forbearance of Allah, we have Yahweh's mercy now because we did these things in unbelief. We didn't understand what we were doing. Therefore, we are thankful. Continue, please. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Yahweh. And we have that abundance of grace here for us as well, knowing that we committed a multitude of sins. And, there, and also there's a multitude, there's a lot for us to come o overcome within ourselves. Therefore, Yahweh is dwelling with us and dealing with us in faith and in love so that we may be delivered. And that faith and love is where our faith starts. And that's the end goal, faith and love. Continue, please. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all accept, acceptation that Christ Yahweh came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Mm. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Yahweh. Now, we had jumped, that just jumped to 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 13. Seeing as though Christ came to save sinners, of which I feel I am chief, <laughs> more than Paul, um, we know that we have this hope in seeing the testimonies that Yache dwelt with Paul, though he was blaspheming, prosecuting, and injurious, Yache dwelt with him in faith and love to bring him unto the end of the faith. So seeing this and knowing this helps give us confidence and strengthens us to hold fast the form of sound words that we receive from the apostles that we may attain through faith and love, which is in Christ Yahweh. And it's the faith and the love is essential because our journey starts in faith through Christ to lead us unto the end. If we are steadfast, not given up unto the end, which is charity, the goal of the commandments. And let's get more exhortation from Paul on this, please. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14. For we are made partakers of Christ, if we hold the beginning of, of our confidence steadfast unto the end. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Our confidence began in the blood of Christ, believing that he can purge our conscience and deliver us from our former works. We have to hold steadfast in this as we are being brought through our former works, as we've been talking about over and over how it's a process. So we're going through the change. We have to stay steadfast, believing and working towards the goal of righteousness in Christ Yache. The faith being a process, I'm sorry, the faith is it's a process of cleaving to him. And in cleaving to the fear of the Lord, this presses us forward unto his love where we seek to end up. Can we read Sirach chapter 25, verse 12, please? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of his love, and faith is the beginning of cleaving unto him. So we see, we get uh, also exhortation that the fear of the Lord is where it starts to enter into his love. So to, in order to get to the love, we have to have his fear, which is keeping his commandments. The keeping his commandments is the beginning of his love. That lets us know that's just a start to get to where his love is. And in, and in order to cleave unto him to grow in that fear, we have to have faith. Because as the scripture says, faith is the beginning of cleaving unto him. So when we believe in that blood of Yache, we've started a process of cleaving. And then we have to go into the fear of Allah Hayyam so that we can be brought on to the process of his love. And this is the journey that we're embarking on. Let's begin. Let's begin this journey with great faith, even as the angels of repentance commanded unto us. Can we read the Shepherd of Hermas Mandate 1? Chapter, the whole mandate, please. The Shepherd of Hermit, Mandate 1, Chapter 1, Verse 1. First of all, 
believe that Allah is one, even he who created all things and set them in order, and brought all this things is first. Oh, sorry. And brought all things from non existence into being. This is our first commandment. First of all, believe Allah is one. Believe in the, the strength of our Allah Continue, please. Now, we're not talking about one Allah saying that Yahweh is the Father and the Holy Spirit. He's all of these things. No, we're saying that they're one. They're united. They're all in agreement. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all in agreement to get together. That makes them one body. Amen. Amen. Okay. Who comprehendeth okay. all things? Being alone incomprehensible. Amen. Continue, please. Believe him, therefore, and fear him. And in this fear, be continent. In, in this fear, be continent. This, so we have, we, we, we first find out of Allah Haim through faith in the blood of his son. And then in that faith, we have to believe that Allah Haim is one. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bear witness in heaven, even as the blood, the water, and the Spirit bear witness in us, as John spoke of in First John chapter 5. These beliefs, let in, we, we have these beliefs, and then we, we fear him. And in that fear of him, we are continent to keep his commandments. Because holiness with contentment is a great gain, as Paul spoke of. And what does the angel continue to exhort us on, brother? Keep these things, and thou shalt, and thou shalt cast off all wickedness from thyself. Amen. All right. And shalt clothe thyself with every excellence of righteousness. And shalt live unto Allah if thou keep this commandment. That's so true because if you have faith in the blood of his son and believe that they are one and that they control all and comprehend all and in that fear we're walking according to the fear of the Lord We and we're continent in that we're just walking through the process with contentment being brought unto love. That's why if we keep these things, we'll cast off all wickedness from ourselves. And we'll be clothed with every excellence of righteousness and live unto Allah because we're humbly walking through the process of being brought unto his love. The end of the, the end of the commandments. So let's keep this with confidence unto the end. Can you read first Timothy chapter one, verse five, so we can see where the end is that we're being taken unto through this way. Now, the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. Hopefully we have understanding of what this process is to get to this end now. The end of the commandment is charity. That's the whole goal where we're trying to get onto. And if we do it, if we're continent in the fear of Allah Hayyam, in the simple belief in the blood of Christ and that our Allah Hayyam is one, the Father, Son, and the Spirit, and we're working out our salvation in meekness with fear and trembling. That's doing it out of a pure heart. Just singleness toward Allah Hayyam. And we would have a good conscience because we're doing all things out of fear unto him. And that is not only, it, it shows that we have faith unfeigned because we're staying steadfast unto the end. It's all exemplified in our works. So hopefully this helps us understand that what we have to what helps us understand what we have to do to attain unto the love of Allah, which is the end of the commandment. Can we, having this understanding all together now in the unity of Christ, let's go forward as the elect of Allah, putting on the garments of righteousness and casting off all wickedness with the exhortations of how we ought to behave from our brother Paul. In uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14, please. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. Put on, therefore, as the elect of Elohim, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, 
kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Now, this is essential because we, I want to touch, we started at talking about how Paul talked on how Yache enabled him and his mercy was abundant toward him in faith and love so that Paul could come out of his sins and become an example of a believer. And now we're being commanded to treat each other the same, to operate with each other in faith and in love, even as Yache is operating with us. Because he's meek toward us, he's kind, humble, long-suffering, and he's forbearing and forgiven us. And therefore, we ought to do the same to exemplify that faith and love that is being worked toward us. And continue, please. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And all this will bring us onto that bond of perfectness, charity, so that we may be with Allah Hayyam forever ever in his love because charity is the greatest of all and can you read first corinthians chapter 13 verse 13 please and now abide his faith hope charity these three but the greatest of these is charity amen because faith is there faith is where we started that's essential and then hope is where we're continuing in hoping that if we are steadfast will be delivered and partake in his glory right. and if we charity is the greatest of these because if we have charity we've made it unto the end of the commandment we have the seal that the spirit is with us and that we'll partake in the resurrection and in the kingdom so with this we have our exhortation from brother ignatius in the ep epistle of Ignatius to the Ephesians, these letters you can find on the website. Hopefully, uh, I will, and we have the epistle of Ephesians as, on there as well. Uh, can we read chapter 3, verse 11 to 17, please? Let it be your care, therefore, to come more fully together to the praise and glory of Allah. For when ye meet fully together, in the same place, the powers of the devil are destroyed, and his mischief is dissolved by the unity of their faith. By the unity of faith, the more we come together in love, the devil's works are destroyed because we're all dealing with each other according to the meekness of Christ, helping each other move forward. All right, continue, please. And indeed, nothing is better than peace, by which all war, both spiritual and earthly, is abolished. Amen. All right, continue, please. Of all which nothing is hid from you, if you have perfect faith and charity in Christ Yahweh, which is the beginning and end of life. Amen. This is where this understanding emanated from. Faith and charity is the beginning and end of life. Continue, please. For the beginning is faith, and the end is charity. And these two, being in unity, joined together, are of Allah and all other things which concern a holy life are the consequences of these. It's all the consequences of these two, faith and charity. Continue, please. No man professing a true faith sinneth, neither does he That's true. who has charity hate any. That's absolutely true. Now we have exhortation on what faith really means. Because we now understand our faith is the beginning of cleaving unto him. And in that faith, it brings us unto the fear of Allah, which is the beginning of his love to bring us towards him closer. And that fear of Allah is the keeping of his commandments. Therefore, anyone professing a true faith cannot, is not sinning. So this is why we're so eager and we always exhort on keeping the commandments, bearing the fruits of the spirit so that our faith will actually be true. And letting go of all malice and bitterness towards any, but being forbearing and long suffering so that our charity would stand firm. That because we don't hate anyone or bear malice or bitterness or resentment towards anyone. Continue, please. The tree is made manifest by its fruit. So they who profess themselves to be Christians are known 
are known by what they do. Our actions will tell if we're true Christians. Our tree, what comes out of our heart, what comes out in our actions, that will profess what fruit we are truly of. All right, continue, please. For Christianity is not the work of the outward profession, but shows itself in the power of faith. If a man be found faithful unto the end. If a man be found faithful unto the end. With this exhortation, brothers and sisters, let us show our Christianity by our works. Not by our words, but by our good works in the power of faith unto the end, so that we may be found true Christians in, indeed. And um, to, that is where this short lesson closes. And just a exhortation to understand that this understanding is not something new you have in first samuel chapter 2 verse 5 it said speak no more exceedingly proud for it talks about how alahayim by uh where's that verse at i'm sorry that show is about to mess it up to understand that it was always our actions that showed what we were really of it's uh First Samuel chapter two, verse three. I'm sorry. Talk no more exceedingly proud. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For Ahaya is Allahim of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. So it's an old understanding that it's through our actions Allahim judges. Therefore, let us go forth in faith, working through the fear of Allah unto love, which is the end of the commandment, or charity, which is the same thing, with a good conscience and a pure heart and faith unfeigned. And that's that, brother. All right. We hope everybody enjoyed the lesson. Again, we're sorry for the stream. But we will be uploading this lesson as soon as we're finished with it. Um, if there's any questions about the Feast of Tabernacles, um, please send us an email at hebrewreaders.gmail.com. And may Allah keep you all, and may you all enjoy this last day of the Feast. Again, this day of the Feast, you don't have to dwell in, in booths. You don't have to dwell in tents. But it is a feast day, so you can cook and, and have a great time with your, your loved ones. And praise Allah We thank you. Shabbat Shalom. Hello.